Hello and welcome to the Little Nut Chronicles. This story is the story of the simple man. Now the story goes that the simple man, and he's simple because he enjoys the simple pleasures of life, cooking, looking after his garden, the little things that so many people sort of overlook. Anyway, he lives this wonderful, simple life, an ordinary life in an extraordinary way. And then one day, he receives an invitation to the wedding. And being a simple fellow, he sort of thinks about it for a little bit, and he decides, yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to answer the call and go to the wedding. And so off he wanders through the countryside and um, along the roads, lead him, lead him through cities and valleys and all over the place. Until eventually, at some point, he comes to a, a sort of a crossroads, a fork in the road. And there are three possible paths that he can go down. Now the first path he looks down has a large sign that says the spiritual road. And there he sees all these people sort of starving themselves, meditating 10 hours a day, flagellating themselves, doing all sorts of strange and wonderful spiritual type things. And he looks down the road and he thinks about it for a bit and he goes, mm, it doesn't look very sort of enjoyable to me. So I certainly don't really want to go down that road. And so he turns to the next road. And there on the second road is a large sign that says the hard road. And he says, well, that doesn't bode very well. But anyway, he sort of looks, peeks and peers down the road and and there he sees all these knights charging about in great armor and sort of fighting battles. And he takes one step closer to have a sort of closer look. And without realizing, it steps onto the hard road. And this knight, this mighty knight in shining armor emerges from under a tree and looks at him and says, Insect, what are you doing on my road? Where is your armor? Where is your horse? How can you expect to come onto this road without those? How can you expect to win battles, to save maidens and slay dragons? And the simple man sort of looks at him and says, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, so that, but uh, what's, wh what's a dragon? And the knight just laughs and says to him, be off with you. This road is not for you. And uh, the simple man says, well, <clears throat> quite right, yes. Um, I don't think it is. <laughs> and so he turns to the third road. And the sign on the third road is the royal road. And he looks at the sign and looks down at himself and his clothes and he thinks, well, my, my clothes are a bit patchy and I don't look very royal at the moment. And while he's sort of wondering about whether or not he's going to go down the royal road, this little bluebird flies just over the top of his head, sort of skims his head and flies into a tree on the royal road. And because he's a simple man, he's captured in the sort of wonder and magic of the moment of the little bird flying over his head. And without thinking, he follows the bird onto the royal road. Now, as he steps onto the royal road, this sort of genie whoosh, appears out of nowhere and says, what are you doing on this road? And the simple man is sort of startled out of the moment. He said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to the wedding. And this genie sort of gatekeeper guardian says, you may pass. And the simple man says, what? Is that it? And the guardian says, yes. I asked you what you were doing on this road. And you said, you're going to the wedding. You may pass. And so the simple man said, well, uh, thanks very much, thank you. And off he went. And so he wandered along the royal road, every now and then stopping off and sort of enjoying the company of fair maidens, of friends that he met along the way. And he had many celebrations. But see, he always kept going, always kept moving on towards the wedding. He'd stop for a while, but then he'd carry on his journey. And so eventually he came to the end of the royal road. 
and there in front of him were these great golden gates with a wedding written into the gates, sort of inscribed in the metal. And he's about to sort of approach them when he realizes there in front of the gates is a set of scales. And above the scales it says...